Hey guys, thanks for joining me on another video. Today we're working on a customer's snowblower. It is a Mastercraft 5 horse, 24 inch, made by MTD. Uh, customer's concern is that if he's got about an inch of snow on the ground, it's fine. It's okay, but if it gets much thicker than that and the engine's got to work a little bit, it just dies out with no power. Uh, I'm thinking it's one of two things. I haven't looked at it yet. I haven't done anything to this yet. We see we've got a customer repair pull cord. A little nylon rope there. Anyways, <laughs> I'm thinking it's either going to be plugged up main jet or partially plugged because he says it will run at fast speed. It just has no power. So it's either going to be a partially plugged main or I'm thinking the gen the uh, governor may be misadjusted. We have a, a budget on this machine. He doesn't want to spend more than $100, so I don't want to get too crazy involved. I'm not going to go over everything and, and give her a full tune-up or anything, but uh, it does have a new spark plug in there. I don't know what kind it is. What does that sound there? First fire? Yep, first fire. Should be a champion uh, J19 LM. But uh, we'll check it. We'll pull it out. We'll check for spark. Make sure that uh, it's got oil in it. It's one of the very, fir very, very first things I do when I'm starting to diagnose anything. First thing, check the oil. Make sure there's oil in it. The customer has repaired his own pull cord, so I don't know what else he's been wrenching with. So, oil's not super clean, but it's not bad, and it's up. So, I'm gonna get you set in a stand, get this thing figured out, start looking at stuff, see what's going on. Hold tight guys, we'll get you figured out here. Okay, we've checked for oil, I'm gonna check for spark. I can put a spark tester in there, and it'll tell me if the coil's firing, but I'm not replacing the spark plug, so I might as well use this spark plug because you can have spark from the coil, but a bad plug or a smash down electrode or too big of a gap or too small of a gap. Gap looks okay. Actually, it looks, the gap looks really good. Let me grab my, my gap tool, we'll check it. Should be about 30 thou. Where are we at? Look at that, 30 thou. Perfect. Thought it looked okay. Grab a light real quick. I'm going to look down on top of that head there. See what I can see. See some carboned up valves. A little bit. A little bit of carbon on there. Thinking it's probably alright. So. Get that plug in the wire there. If you're going to check for spark like this, make sure you keep it away from the plug hole. I know there's there's no gas in this thing at all. Keep it away from the plug hole because if there is gas, if it's a flooded engine, the gas will fly out of there and you'll actually uh, <laughs> get a big flamethrower show out of the top of the cylinder head. Okay, I guess you zoomed in there and see if we can see any spark. Yep, we got spark. We're good. My next step is I'm going to pull the carburetor off. I was going to take the, the chute adjusting rod off so I can have some room to get in there and work on the carburetor and I noticed that this machine has the optional bent nail retaining pin. Pretty sure I can grab one out of my stash and replace that for him. <laughs> so first things first, remove the choke knob, they just slide off. Very gentle, these older machines sometimes that knob gets brittle key out of the way. There's going to be a wire attached underneath here as well that we're going to have to get out of the way. Two Phillips screws here, one eight millimeter screw on the top. Uno. Dos. Get that little primer hose off of there. Little wiggle and a pull. That comes off. Old brittle stuff. Oh, well, the fuel line is cracking. That's wonderful. I 
going to take a Sharpie and just put a dot on the hole beside the hole where the rod was originally placed. So I didn't have to mark the governor. I'll just leave the rod in there hanging. This little screw here, that sets your maximum speed. You can actually access that from the back with the cover on. Let's get into the carburetor and see what we see in there. Sounds pretty dry in there. I get you a reset on the bench and uh, we'll tear in. Have a look. All right, so the carburetor's off. Scratch, scratch. There. So that's got some physical mark on it now that once it's out of the sonic cleaner, I'll be able to tell where it was. The flat part of this bowl, you want lined up with the pin here, the float pin. It's actually not very dirty in there. There is a little bit of dirt in there, but not, not a lot. You can just see white rubber seat in there. It's a brass float. I don't hear any gas in it. What I'll do is I'll put a little bit of uh, WD-40 penetrating oil down in there. And then I'll use my blow gun and an air compressor and I'll force air into this inlet fitting. And the volume of air going in is far more than the volume that that little seat can pass. So it'll just shoot that seat out. So I've got to cup everything in my hand and make sure it can't go flying across the shop. Catch somebody in the eye. <laughs> You guys should wear safety glasses when you're working with compressed air. Doesn't matter what you're doing with it. Impact gun's not usually a problem, but anything with a blow gun or anything like that, a little bit of safety helps. Rubber tip blow gun. Try and hold that. Let's see. There we go. Ow! That stung. But it came out. <laughs> you got me. So there's our seat. Little rubber seat. Squishy. I don't want to damage that by putting it in the ultrasonic cleaner. It's a choke bracket and it's also the, the bracket with the two screws here that held that big black cover on. Oh. So what I'm aiming for is down in there a little red piece is the tube goes right through the bottom. I'm going to try and get that out. There's usually holes and stuff down the side of them. Little passages for fuel. It's tricky with the choke and everything in there. I don't want to take, take the choke plate off the butterfly. I think I felt it move. That tube a little bit moved just a little. Yep, sure did. There we go. There's that tube. Out she comes. All right, I can hear the uh, the cleaner is warming up over there. I'm gonna dunk this in. Let it continue to warm up. Once it's at operating temperature, that I'll, uh, the machine itself, I'll hit the uh, the on button and get it ultrasonicing. All right, so I'm gonna put this, dunk this in the uh, in the bath. It's bath time for carburetor, and uh, we'll get the camera back on after I get it out of there. All right, so the carbs out of the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. I'm gonna do a bit of reassembly here. The cap that I pointed out on the side that was the uh, idle mixture adjustment on the old carburetors. It, uh, I actually got the cap out. It's just a plastic cap. I I forgot that the cap comes out. It's a fixed jet underneath there. It's not adjustable. But I did take it out and I made sure it was all clean and everything. So that's that's good. That's all set. Not adjustable. It's a fixed fixed jet. Snug down. Good enough. All the passages I could find are clean. So we're gonna reassemble. Drop a little bit of WD-40 on this to, just to help those O-rings slide up in there. I'm going to gently insert that tube in there. 
push it up into its home. Yeah, it looks like it's sticking through the same amount as it was when it when I took it apart. There's a little seat to go in. I got a small little uh, seat installer for a different carburetor. I'll grab a hold of that and let me see if I can let me see if it'll work for this. Hang on. We'll get it started. If you look at the seat, there is an up and a down. You can see on the camera. I'm not sure if you can. Maybe it's got a glare. You see this has got a ridge. There's a ridge around this, another ring around it. And this side is flat. This side has no ridge on it. The ridge goes down. Down into the carburetor. A little Liberty 40. And I'm just gonna flip the carb this way, get it started in that hole because it never fails. You get it partially in there and then it flips over on you and push it down in. You don't want to warp it, you don't want to smash it, you don't want to fold it over or spin it around in the hole. But that's all the way seated now. Get the float in there, make sure the needle lines up. Okay, so that little bend, little bend made a difference. See, it's much, much more parallel now. Put ourselves a new gasket on there. I didn't put the bowl in the ultrasonic cleaner because I didn't want to damage the little rubber seal that's on the bottom of this. Make sure the gasket is started all the way around. Yep, we're good. Our little fiber gasket on top of the bowl nut slash main jet, which I've blown everything up with the compressed air. Like I said, there's a through hole here. There's a tiny hole in here. I blew all that out. Just get this fired back on there. Snug, but not gorilla tight. That's good. Throw a choke bracket back on there. Oh. Loctite. A little bit of uh, 242 block, uh, blue Loctite. A little drop. Half a drop. Oh, got away from me there. This should do it for the carburetor anyways. I mean, it wasn't too dirty. But... I don't think anybody's ever had the uh, emulsion tube out and everything. I'm gonna get this animal bolted back onto the engine, get a little bit of fuel in it, and see what happens. Stay tuned, guys. All right, so it's the next day. I've got the car back on there, and I did have it running. And of course, like I thought, a fuel line was gonna leak. I thought it was gonna leak, and it's leaking. It's cracked. But anyways, uh, I had it fired up. I didn't, uh, I was having a hard time staying running. It just it was lacking power. It didn't seem right. So I decided to do a uh, leak down test. Want to check compression. These things are known for exhaust valve leakage. I'm getting pitting in there or a little chunk of carbon to hold it open. But usually the you got to lap this, the, uh, the valves in. Sometimes the valve clearance goes away and then it holds it open a little bit, but I think this one's going to be a pitted seat and a rusty rusty valve. So what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll get uh, a little bit of a better angle here on the camera and I'll do a leak down test and I'll show you guys what I found and uh, so you can see for yourselves. Hang on, I'll get you resituated here. Yeah, we've got a bit of a higher angle here so it's uh, going to be easier for you to see. So what I've done is, uh, this is a flathead engine. I've pulled the spark plug out. I can look right down there. I can see the top of the piston. I've already got the top of the piston at the very top of its travel. I can see that both valves are closed. So this should be the top dead center of the compression stroke. So I'm going to thread this uh, leak down tester in there. Previously I did, uh, in one of my other videos, I did a diagnostics with this tool. 
showing you how it works. Actually, uh, I really like them. So at this point, we're going to attach the tool. We'll get the other side of the machine here and plug it in. I'll we'll show you where I'm at, what I'm doing. So if you have an air compressor, this is the tool to use. If you don't have an air compressor, you're out of luck. You gotta use a regular compressor gauge. So if you attached it, and what you do is this is your set point, this is your set pressure. Sure, let me get you a little bit zoomed in there, so. So this is your set point. So you are injecting air into that top of the cylinder. There's the middle there is where I need to put this. So I'll set it right in the middle of the set point. <clears throat> this gauge here is showing percentage of leakage. 15% is about the high end. I don't like to see any more than 15% leakage. And that leakage being basically by the valve by the uh, piston rings because your valve should be airtight so zoom in there let's see what we got for leakage focus for me we got about 95 94 95 percent leakage the other thing this cylinder leakage test does is if it is leaking you can hear it so you're either going to hear it coming out of the carburetor, which I don't. The noise is not changing. You could hear it coming out of the oil tube. Have a listen. You're going to get some noise out of the oil tube because it's going to leak by the rings. It just it's that's normal, a small amount. But if you loosen this and the cap pops up, that's way too much air. The other thing is your exhaust. There's only there's only a few places where the compression can leak out. The head gasket Exhaust valve, intake valve, or the rings. So, let's get you closer there so you can hear this. I'm just going to cover up the exhaust part. You can actually feel air coming out of there. So, we've got a bad exhaust valve. Like I said earlier in the video, this customer has a budget on this machine, and uh, that's over budget. So I better give them a shout. There's a good chance I could take the motor down and lap the valve in, check the uh, check the lash and get it fixed up, but it's going to be more than he wants to spend on this machine. So I'll do a quick update after I give the customer a call. I'll let you know, let you guys know what's going on. So I just got off the phone with my customer. Told him the top end of the motor needs to come apart and get the valves reseated. Probably just lapped and adjusted. But uh, he said, no, nah, I don't want to spend the money. He goes, you keep it. I'll buy a new one. So we can look forward to that. That's going to be an upcoming thing. This is uh, this customer repair has turned into a, a flipper, a resale job. It's actually not in too bad a shape. It's not a, it's not a high-end machine. It's a five-horse MTD, but uh, it's perfect for a small driveway, a walkway. If you don't have, you know, miles of driveway to, to blow out. It's not in bad shape. We'll get it running right. I did look at the governor. I was concerned that possibly the governor had been monkeyed with, but uh, it's in everything's set where it needs to be. That governor spring needs to be in the lowest hole. This throttle alarm, I put it back where I found it. It hadn't been monkeyed with. That is the correct hole for that. It's the one closest to the to the throttle shaft. And that rod is supposed to be in that hole. So, oh, and also, let's get a light on. Here we go. The spring for the governor should be in the third hole down from the top. So the governor is, other than the adjustment screw, I, I didn't mess with that. It doesn't look like it's been messed with. The governor is set correctly. I mean, it does run just fine without a load on it. As soon as you load it up, it loses power. And that's because it's losing compression through that... Uh, leaking exhaust valve anyways this is going to be a actually it's a pretty a pretty soon project it's about getting about time to sell these things now here so we're going to tear into this it's in the shop now i might as well carry on we're going to have to replace that leaky fuel line 
So once I get it all apart, this is the perfect time to do it. Covers and everything will be off. We'll change the fuel line out, put a new one on. And there's going to be video on it. I'm going to wrap this one up here, though. Um, it's going to be a separate video. I don't want to get too long. I've got messages sometimes saying that my videos run too long, but uh, I'm going to try and chop them up a little shorter. Until the continuation... Well, I probably won't call it a continuation. But until the next video on this machine, guys, take care. Thanks for joining me. Smash that uh, like button. Give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell no notification icon to let you know when I get a uh, new video uploaded. Till then, take care. Catch you in the next one.